I would like to go deep with you today. I want to share two main ideas. The first one is stress causes 90% of all diseases physically and mentally in our world, according to the World Health Organization. The second idea is the disconnection within yourself is the trauma that creates the stress in our daily lives, which makes us sick. According to Dr. Gabriel Mate, which is an expert on trauma, addiction and stress in childhood development. So let me explain what I mean. We have two basic human needs for survival. The first is our need for attachment. An infant is vulnerable during its stage of development. It desperately depends on its parents or caregivers for protection, for love and for nourishment to survive. Attachment, therefore, is a natural instinct for survival between a child and the parents. From infancy throughout childhood, a human child cannot survive on its own. And the second human need is authenticity. Have you ever had this gut feeling or that inner voice inside of you telling you that you should do something and you followed it and then something wonderful worked out for you? That's what is authenticity. We need authenticity to know what we feel and to listen to that inner voice, to be in touch with our bodies and to also know when something is wrong. And even more than that, to be able to express who we are and manifest who we are in our activities and in our relationships. Our need for authenticity helps us transition from out of attachment to our parents and become independent, mature adults. Great, so far so good. Now, what happens to a child when there is a conflict now between their attachment need and the need for authenticity? You see, the need for authenticity becomes suppressed and the need for attachment becomes priority in order to survive for the child. Do you remember a time as a child when you learned to stop expressing how you felt because you were afraid that your parents would stop loving you and not accept you anymore? A child who feels that their attachment is under threat will believe if I'm authentic with my parents, they will reject me. If I feel what I feel and express what I feel and I insist on my own truth, my parents cannot handle it. When we perform what is requested from us, when we bring home the good grades, then we'll receive love and acceptance. But if we don't behave well, and if we don't bring home the good grades, then our parents often convey the message that you are not acceptable the way you are. And that feeling of suppressing your authenticity is the definition of trauma. And it's not so much what happens to you, but more so what happens inside of you. You became disconnected from yourself. And we learn quickly to suppress our emotions over and over again until one day we wake up and we have no clue anymore of who we are. Our perceived threat of not being accepted and not being loved, in other words, losing our attachment, led us to disconnect with ourselves and turned on the stress reaction in your body. And stress is not just an idea. Stress is a physical and chemical reaction in your body, which expresses itself as the fight, flight or freeze response. 
We fight against people who reject us or who hurt us, who disapprove of us. We freeze when we are afraid or overwhelmed. We start to procrastinate. We feel lost and we don't take responsibility. We don't do the things that we need to do. We run away from the threat of being unloved and unaccepted by friends. And we hide behind our addictions and distractions. We hide in our work. We become workaholics. We hide, hide and distract us with social media. Or we run into our video games while we are in our own world because we are safe there. And as we t continue to suppress our authenticity, we are more stressed and we become sick. So stress is basically something you perceive as necessary for survival is under threat. For example, losing the love and acceptance from your parents or for your loved ones. And our body cannot distinguish if it's a real life threat or if it's just something created in your mind. And your brain starts the chemical reaction. Your digestive system and your immune system gets highly suppressed. And this is causing illnesses and diseases, all of them, mentally and physical, which here I just wrote a few down for you. In Germany, um, for example, treatment for depression or anxiety, uh, when, you, when you go to a doctor and you get diagnosed, it takes between five to ten months until you get treatment. And we have 83 million people in Germany and about 34,500 psychologists. That makes 2,400 patients per doctor of psychologist, which is not manageable. And I experienced um, uh, in the emergency room that a lot of people come with mental problems and they are just ending up on waiting lists. And they are so frustrated about that. This is the reality. They are frustrated and they end up in the emergency room because they have a breakdown or they have any kind of other diseases, like they get stomach ulcers and their body really is suffering from that, their physical body. And even the doctors are so desperate that they cannot help and manage everything in time that they sometimes just even tell them, you know what, you can just say that you have suicidal thoughts because they themselves are so under pressure and so overworked and don't have the time. And you can wait five months when you have depression or even 10 months, and then something really bad might happen. And this is the reality that I experienced, which is pretty scary. But um, I just want to encourage you all, please don't wait to see a professional. Don't wait to, to, for your treatment until it starts. Get active yourself. Start to educate yourself, read about it, read books about these topics, get in touch with others, get into a community. And I think that's very important. Everybody needs to find something that they can do on a daily basis to take care of our mental health so that we can deal with our stress. And when you actually look at the definition of what is mental health, it means balancing your life and work, contributing to community, and every time you are incapable of doing that because you are a little bit too stressed, that's basically when you're not living mental health anymore. And that vice versa can mean you have a mental health issue now. So it starts very, very subtle in small ways. And one thing I would like also to share with you is the definition of addiction. Any behavior that gives you temporary relief and pleasure that you crave and pursue despite negative consequences is an addiction. And when you think about this now, that could mean when you are stressed, you start to eat unhealthy stuff, which I'm guilty of sometimes. I, when I'm stressed, I eat chocolate sometimes. I'm guilty of that. Despite knowing that it's unhealthy, that's an addiction. And that can be also when you're too stressed, you escape and just scroll through social media to distract your mind, stop thinking of your own story. And when you always do that again, just to escape, that is an addiction. And when you see it like from this perspective now, you can see, honestly, 
we all have mental health issues and that completely destigmatizes it where we can say we are all guilty of that we are all not mentally healthy i think we can all raise our hands here in saying i have an addiction and when i'm stressed i do these kinds of unhealthy behaviors i i am one of them i'm grabbing these chocolate bars <laughs> and and that just really breaks off the huge negative impact what we think we have or when we feel ashamed to talk about it we don't need to feel ashamed about that guys because we really all are suffering from that let's let's really focus on what we can all do to become mentally fit every day and as we do that gradually we are all getting better and we will be all a better support for each other so how am i helping to solve that problem I help people to heal their trauma and teach them how to reconnect with themselves. I found that the best way to reconnect with your authentic self is using the four steps, breath work, mindfulness, meditation and manifestation together in a daily habit that is proven to be very effective. Breath work found by Harvard University, is the best way to remove instantly and long-term stress. Mindfulness helps you to become self-aware. Some of you already talked about becoming aware. Mindfulness helps to become self-aware and to reconnect with yourself. And by the way, it also shrinks the amygdala, which is the fear center in your brain after just eight weeks of training. And meditation helps you to heal your trauma, to go deeper. And manifestation helps you practice creating an intentional life. So that's what I teach in my programs. I put them together into a 15 minute daily practice and it has been tremendous help to my students in their journey of reconnecting with their true selves. And I explain that more in detail, the neuroscience of what happens during those four steps in my book, which is called The Timeout Effect, and you can pre-order it now on Amazon. So if you have more questions about my work or about meditation, you are happily invited to join the Facebook group, which is written here, find it under um, facebook.com slash winter meditation community. And today, for everybody who's on the call here right now, I have a special gift for you, which you find under the website wintermeditation.com slash uplevel your life. And there I also provide some tools that you can use tonight, tomorrow, and every day after that to help you to deal with your stress. Thank you very much.